Welcome to Buckeyes Tomorrow Morning for Friday, September 15th. I'm your host, Tom Orr. The Western Kentucky game is tomorrow. The game against Michigan in 71 days. We are back with our buddy Ross Fulton of BuckeyeHuddle.com. He's our X's and O's guru, and we're today we're going to be taking a look at the defense. If you want to hear about the offense, well, you can go ahead and listen to yesterday's show. We broke down a bunch of plays from the Buckeyes' win over Youngstown State and took a little bit of a look ahead at what that could mean for this weekend against the Hilltoppers. Today, we're going to be talking about the defense. And Ross, I guess before we really dive into any of these plays, I wanted to ask you about the production or, you know, maybe lack of production from the defensive ends. They have not really gotten to the quarterback yet this year. Um, And I think that's been a little bit of a source of concern from Ohio State fans. I saw uh, Space Coyote on Twitter, who is generally a a Michigan fan, who is generally pretty insightful on this stuff, talk about it as potentially being something that's sort of tied in with Jim Knowles' scheme and how he uses those guys. They talked on uh, during the interviews on Tuesday as if that was more of an issue with the opponents and what the opponents were and were not doing against the Buckeyes. Is it one of those? Is it both of those? Is it something else? What is the deal with the defensive ends and not having any sacks so far this year? Uh, yeah, Space Coyote, good friend of the program, heavily recommend his his stuff. Um, it's a combination of all of those. So like the first quick clip I grabbed is particularly on rundowns you will see Knowles pinch in his defensive line, and including the ends, quite a bit to f- spill the football outside. Um, but that, that applies less so on third down or passing downs. Um, you know, the both opponents, obviously Indiana didn't throw very much. Uh, Youngstown State, as we'll talk about, got the football out very quickly a lot, a lot of the time. Um, probably as, as they're concerned about the pass rush. Um, you know, I, I think like you have to separate out, uh, JT and Sawyer. Like to me, JT is like a, you know, Cam Hayward or Rashawn Gary. He's like a, a very stereotypical, prototypical, like strong side defensive end. And so like he's really good against the run. Like he, he does create pressure. I'm, I'm just don't, he's not going to be like Chase Young, who's like your stereotypical weak side rush end. Um, so I like, I don't really have a ton of concern there. I, frankly, like Jack Sawyer's production is a little bit more concerning to me. Um, I mean, he, he's pretty good against the run. So that's something I, he does seem like there were multiple instances during the game where he was slow out of his stance. And I'm, I'm not sure why that was a thing, but like, you know, you can freeze it after the ball snapped and like everyone's off and he's still in his stance. Um, and I just, I'm not sure that like he's going to be someone who gets a lot of pressure. Um, I mean, maybe he'll, maybe he'll prove, prove us all wrong. Um, I did think you started to see Kane Curry brought in some on passing down to that spot. And I, I think he has a little bit more ability to create pressure. And so I do think there's, there's some scheme issues. There's some opponent scheme issues, but there is also, I think some lagging concern going forward, particularly from that, uh, well, they, you know, and um, this is part of it. They don't flip their ends at all in terms of strong side and weak side. But from what I would consider like your typical weekend position or, you know, for them, their right defensive end. All right. So then you mentioned, you know, that the first play that we're going to be looking at will kind of help illustrate some of this. So let's talk about it. it. The Buckeyes bring a corner blitz and Youngstown State does exactly what you want to do when they bring a quarter blitz. You run the other way and then they had to pick up a nice game there. So what did you, uh, how, how does this sort of lay out what you're, uh, you know, what you're talking about here? So again, you can find lots of clips like this and like even putting aside the, the blitz, like you can see both ends come down inside into the B gap. Like you have both, you have both defensive tackles hitting the A gap, both hit, both defensive ends come inside the tackles in the B gap. So that's like, that's exactly what Space Coyote is talking about. Like that's what Knowles likes to do. Again, we've talked about before, like he wants the ball to spill outside. The problem I have, even probably more so than the pressure, and there were multiple instances like this play where the ball was spilled outside and it was spilled to no one or like people were out of position. And like, you know, Knowles, I think, talked about and on the Tuesday press conference, like people were freelancing and maybe that's the issue. Um, but like, you know, this play, for instance, like Sonny Styles gets blocked inside, like he can't get caught inside. Uh, Eichenberg's kind of in no man's land. It could be the situation like this play is like second, uh, you know, three minutes to go in the second quarter. They have a blitz on. So it could be like they, you know, he's setting up to drop in coverage, but like 
you saw a little bit of improvement at times in the second half where like they lined the linebackers up wider so they they were to, they were there to spill but like other situations where like the football would get kicked outside and there would be either like in the scheme no one there and or someone would miss a tackle and so you know um like the pass rush is one thing but like the run defense also had some issues um and this was the biggest concern and so i think that at a minimum you want to see better cohesion between the 11 people in the positions they're supposed to be and, and flow into the football. All right. And one of the kind of concerns with Ohio State, at least just from a high level perspective, the first couple of weeks is the defense not always getting off the field on third down as often as you'd like them to. This, this next one is a third and four play. Youngstown State picks up a first down. It's in the red zone. I think this one set up the first Youngstown State touchdown, well, the only Youngstown State touchdown. But you know what, what happens here? Yeah, so <clears throat> Jim Knowles talked a lot about at his Tuesday press conference how his like philosophy has changed, uh, and I haven't. It, it's a, sort of a small sample size thus far, but like he did talk about though that early on that first drive, he was trying to kind of get, get the defense like they were kind of you know they were Youngstown State was driving down the field, he was trying to flip it and and get a stop, and so you do see a cover zero blitz here, but a lot of and this goes to the defensive end pass rush too. Like a, a lot of what Youngstown State did was just like these two step drops and throw an H out to the slot receiver. And it was consistently open because Ohio State was just like playing with soft coverage on the inside receivers in particular in cover one. So like soft into the inside, which is somewhat protecting themselves. But like, again, you need to marry the, the front up with the coverage and it's just, it's too easy. Like if you're going to bring a cover zero blitz, you want to make the quarterback hold the ball long enough to get there. I mean, like Ty Hamilton comes in, he's literally not blocked and he doesn't even have enough time to get there because it's just too easy of a throw on third and four. And so I bet, I bet Youngstown State threw at least six to eight of these qu quick out routes to the slot receiver. You know, sometimes they weren't completed because of, you know, I think Jordan Hancock got a little bit tighter coverage and, you know, we can talk about their, the rotation at the nickel position here coming up. Um, cause I, I do think that's important going forward. Cause, but you know, I, I, I just think they're just, a, it just remains sort of too predictable. Like their cover zero, they kind of played off coverage. Like again, and, and we can talk about like their blitz schemes coming up here on the next play as well. Like, you know, people have made the point. It's like sort of all or nothing. Like they're bringing three or four or they're bringing like a cover one or cover zero blitz. And, you know, I continue to wonder, like, where are, like, the sim pressures we talked about where you're bringing four, but you're bringing a linebacker and dropping a defensive end and playing, like, cover two or cover three behind it, or even a fire zone with five and a cover three behind it. And so, I mean, maybe he's just saving that variety, um, but it was it was pretty lacking last year. And so, you know, until we see it, it it's a little concerning. Yeah, it's interesting because he talked on Tuesday about wanting to mix things up and not be predictable and sort of self-scouting and what, what you did in the past and not doing that same stuff. And then it sounds like a lot of that is happening. But, you know, this this is maybe potentially, like you like you sort of said there, potentially the flip side of the you don't want to show too much on offense, you know, in games where you know you're going to win and you're going to save it for Notre Dame or wherever. So I, we may know may know more about that in a couple of weeks. Uh, next up, let's talk about a third and 15 a third down play where they did get off the field. Uh, the uh, defense, I think it was Davis and Igbenosin in coverage here, but uh, what walk us through this uh, next play. Yeah. And so this is an example of at least like a little bit of variety, right? So you're bringing, you're bringing the double a gap pressure. Uh, so he likes, um, you know, Knowles likes running a, a cross dog with the two linebackers where basically they, they cross across, you know, against one another. One of them sort of pins in the, um, the center to try to free the other one. And then it's a, it is cover one. So it's not his own blitz, but he is dropping um, the two defensive ends as rats. And so it's kind of trying, again, trying to take away the, like the quick underneath throws. Like if you're going to bring pressure, um, you know, you want to limit the ability to just like get the ball out quickly, like happened on the previous cover zero example we did. So again, I think it just sort of emphasizes the need for more of this variety and schemes. Like, you know, Knowles talked about, Again, not being too aggressive, right? On Tuesday, and like 
The flip side of not being too aggressive is that you can have happen to you what happened on Saturday, which is like a Youngstown State, obviously like FCS opponent, put that aside, scored only one touchdown. On the flip side, they like, and the reason they only scored one touchdown is because they couldn't create explosive plays, but they could dink and dunk their way down the field and, and it just be annoying that they're playing ball control. Um, and you can't get the football back because you're like keeping things in front of you, but you're, you're not creating, um, negative plays. And so again, I, I, I just feel like the happy medium that seems to be missing is like four and five man zone pressures that mix up where the rush is coming from and, uh, still keeps the football in front of them and lets them play like their cover base cover three. And it's like, you want to talk about getting pressure. Like part of that is like not allowing the offense to know where the rush is coming from or what lanes people are going to hit. Well, you mentioned dink and dunk, and this was quite a little dink and dunk play from Youngstown State. This last one we're going to look at, this is a, a creative use of motion to help get a guy open in the flat. And I don't think you loved how Ohio State's defense responded to this one. So what's, uh, let's, uh, let's take a look at this last play. Yeah. And so before we get into like the play itself, I want to like, back up and talk about because I, I do think this nickel situation is important for Ohio State and it also is I think pretty critical right so like we talked last week like what is how like you know you have Sunny Styles and nickel against Indiana it made a ton of sense like how's that going to work when you face a team that's more uh traditional 11 personnel with a slot wide receiver and it turns out that like you know S Styles for all intents and purposes is the Sam linebacker and so he comes off, he's going to come off the field when a team is into passing downs or, you know, more spread out. And so at first they put in Cam Martinez and, uh, you know, which is like the next gradation of like, he also practices the nickel position, but a very different body, right? But he gets beat on the slot fade. So then they go to Jordan Hancock, which I, I do think like if you're going to have styles in for otherwise, like it makes sense. Like if you're going to bring in coverage, you might as well bring in. A, the third corner, um, especially someone you trust. And I, and I do think that helped passing wise. The downside is that, you know, I don't know how many reps he's actually had at nickel. Um, and, it, and it shows here. And I, I think in general, there was a lot of issues with Ohio State handling Youngstown State's uh, wide receiver motion, orbit motions, you know, jet motions, um, which is kind of ironic because they're the, the concept of the three safeties is supposed to make it easy to adjust to motion, but because they, they played so much cover one, they obviously wanted to chase motion in this game. And so like, this is the extreme example, right? Where they run a yo-yo motion and I don't know if people didn't, didn't, there wasn't enough chatter amongst the um, defense or just Hancock, lack of reps got lost. But like, as you can see, he, he kept chasing and ended up thinking the running back was his, was his, responsibility and coverage, but instead it's an easy throw into the flat. So, you know, I, I guess I, I, I may be sounding like a little negative on the defense. And I, I think there was some definite, uh, you know, I don't think Noel sounded particularly happy with how the defense played either. I mean, you know, we talked about last week that like Indiana playing in a phone booth is like going to fit Ohio state. Like they want to put their 230 pound, you know, nickel on the field and, um, Josh Proctor likes coming downhill. Latham Ransom likes coming downhill. But, like, you know, how are they going to handle space? And, like, that was the issue last year. And, you know, I think they need – so, in some ways, this game was good before they go play Western Kentucky, who's going to max play, do that to the maximum to get some of these reps under their belts or, or some of these things go wrong because I think they have a lot to, to um, build on in terms of covering space. All right, and I'm going to let you go on this one. We, we talked on Tuesday. Uh, about the fact that uh, this is Western Kentucky is not like a true air raid, like a total, you know, Mike Leach clone, but it's air raid adjacent enough that you're getting stressed in some different ways. How is that going to present a challenge for this defense? And what are you, how are you looking for Ohio State to be able to respond to that? Yeah, I mean, I think it's going to present a big challenge. Like, I mean, for all the reasons we've talked about, um, you know, if they're going to play cover one, I think they're going to get messed with a lot with this kind of motions. Um, you know, I think they, if they're going to bring pressure, like they're going to have to be sound. Um, you know, you've got a situation again, it's like, I think you'll probably see a lot of Jordan Hancock at nickel. Um, he, you know, you need to get the reps because like the cr most critical situations, like that's who's going to be in there. Um, 
you know, you've got a, a free safety position that's kind of uh, a morass right now. Like, you got to hope if Josh Proctor is their starter, which it sounds like from Jim Knowles on Tuesday, he is. Like, you got to hope he's back. And you still have to see how he's going to handle playing there. But again, like, you know, I will continue to beat the drum that, like, more variety in coverage, like, being more sound, not getting yourself being too transparent, playing man coverage are all things that they're going to have to to work on. And so I, I do think it's going to be a good test for them. All right. We will be watching that test. And uh, then uh, next week, Ross will be back to grade that test uh, here on the Buckeyes Tomorrow Morning Podcast. And on uh, the, uh, you can just search for Ross Fulton Analysis on YouTube. I'm trying to name all these things with that phrase in there to make them easier to find for you. But uh, if you are watching this on YouTube and you are not subscribed to our channel, make sure you do that at youtube.com slash Buckeye Huddle. We have lots of great content from Ross, but lots of great content from our other contributors covering the team, covering recruiting, covering X's and O's, all to make you a smarter football fan, all at youtube.com slash Buckeye Huddle and BuckeyeHuddle.com. That will do it for today. Thank you guys all for joining us. Have a great day. We'll talk to you tomorrow.